I can explain this, but it's a long story. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Aegis Moto Adventures. If you hadn't noticed from the conclusion of my last video yesterday, we were absolutely knackered. We were really, really tired. And uh, we bit off more than we could chew. Now today we're planning on going from Marion, North Carolina, down to Bryson City, North Carolina. But that may be a little too ambitious too. So only the day will tell how that goes. The back roads here in North Carolina that we're going down has steadily becoming a little bit uh, longer in duration and a little bit more difficult. Some of the gravel roads that we're going down are not too terribly bad. Some of them uh, have some really rough spots in them and uh, uphill, downhill makes it a little bit more challenging. So we're excited to get started today. Join us on our journey. As we head down Grapevine Road, you're kind of lulled into a sense of security here. You're in third gear, rolling along, nice windy road, and then boom. So I stalled the bike on a really steep, tight switchback. When I went to put my foot down, there was no road there to support me. Right, and look, there's another hook right here. Okay. After creating a strategy for the turn, we all made it around, but we had to continue up the mountain without stopping because it was just that steep. Riding through the mountains of North Carolina just is one uh, postcard picture after another. It's just hard to imagine a uh, more beautiful spot in the mountains than around the Asheville area where we're at. It just uh, continues for miles and miles and miles. The allure of the mountains is uh, pretty attractive. <music> All 
all through North Carolina. We marveled at these driveways. Uh, some of them just seemed to go straight up the mountain. I'm not sure how some of the people got to their house. They were just that steep. I believe this is an old tobacco barn because of the open slats. There's a section on Big Pine Road that's just outright dangerous. It goes nearly straight up and straight down. On both sides, there's extremely loose gravel, sand, and uh, dirt. I would not take a big adventure bike or street bike uh, down this road. It's a little stream. My check engine light just came on. I was going down the uh, pretty steep trail, letting my engine do some of the braking. It might have been a little heavy too, D on it. So hopefully my check engine light will go off. Cute little mountain house. Oh, I guess so. Little ruts here. We went down some uh, up and down mountain driving here. Overheated my engine, but everything's good now. Mike, you said Grapevine Road and Big Pine. I'm just saying it now. Thing on a pole. <laughs> For tall birds, maybe. We had ridden for miles and miles on National Forest Service land when we got to this particular point. We ran into just a little bit of a snag here because the road had recently been graded. We ran into the fella and he said it had been graded for the next 12 miles and it had piled up about five to six inches of extremely loose uh, gravel and sand mixture right in the middle of the road. Okay, here we're going through water. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, wasn't really water, but it felt fun. And here's this little dam. And then we got a rough spot getting off of this, too. You can see it's all rocky. Okay, woohoo! We made it! Well, we found out the Transamerica Trail here in North Carolina got very real. <laughs> As you've already seen in the video, I dumped sumo this morning on a really uh, gnarly road, even though it was uh, pavement. And then we went down a road that was a uh, big pine road that was absolutely downright dangerous. I would not advise that for anybody that's new to motorcycling. Uh, that road was straight up and straight down. 
and on the downside it was loose material uh, in loose thick material in places so it was really a difficult road but I got a little surprise here for you because uh, we got to a spot where the uh, road had been graded just as we went under uh, I-40 and that made it just really really miserable to ride on and Sherry was a little concerned that she wouldn't be able to control the bike good enough so what we did was is we decided to skip that section it's a section between I-40 I and Maggie Valley and so what we did we missed out on the uh, uphill climb at the ski resort uh, but I'll just have to save that for another time so we just went around it to Maggie Valley but while we're here in Maggie Valley we're gonna do something special it's kind of been on my bucket list and that is we're gonna go through the Wheels of Time Museum Our dirty adventure bikes look a little out of place here where there is a bunch of street bikes sitting in the parking lot. Right off the bat, you're treated to some unique motorcycles. Here they've made it a motorcycle front end and tank to a lawnmower. Pretty cute, not practical, but cute. To give you an idea of what you might expect from the Wheels Through Time Museum, I'm going to give you a direct quote off their website. The Wheels Through Time Museum is home to the world's premier collection of rare American motorcycles, memorabilia, and distinct array of unique one-off American automobiles. Located just five miles off the Blue Ridge Parkway in Maggie Valley, North Carolina, our museum houses a collection of over 300 rare machines. That's an understatement. This museum is really, really cool. Some motorcycles, like this police cruiser, have been beautifully restored, but a lot of the motorcycles have been left just as they were found. How awesome is that to hear a hundred year old motorcycle running to perfection? In this clip, the motorcycle is housed in an antique little mini garage. this display, they've collected bikes that were modified for hill climbing. If you've not ever uh, seen some of the hill climb motorcycles, that's uh, pretty impressive how they make those motorcycles nowadays. In this clip, they've recreated what an old garage or motorcycle shop might have looked like. display they give a nod to the flat track racers. Throughout the museum they have several displays of like this really elaborate sidecar setup. Here someone's used a motorcycle engine for a home-built aircraft. This is pretty cool and I can't imagine how dangerous that might have been. Starting with this display, it showed how people adapted motorcycle engines to an array of different uh, 
items to reduce workload like plows, saws, uh, railroad cars here. It's just amazing what they adapted motorcycle engines for. This display I found to be one of the most interesting for me. Here there's some boat engines that they've used. In this next clip, they've adapted a motorcycle engine to what the museum bills as the first jet ski. It looks more like a motorized surfboard like I grew up with. This Apache motorcycle has just been beautifully restored. These pedal toys are just awesome, aren't they? This is a case of they don't make them like they used to. Here you can see that the museum houses a second story. Okay, I'm scratching my head on this one. Laugh if you will, but I had one of these banana seat bikes when I was a kid. I rode it and rode it and rode it everywhere, to ball practice, to school, everywhere, until I got too big for the bike. The museum also houses a section that gives a nod to the ladies. They have a map outside here where you can take a push pin and put it on the map from where you're from. So Sherry's going to do that here. She's going to put a push pin in right where we're from.
How fun is that, huh? <laughs> Roy is going to put one right on the map where he's from also. So it was a great day. We had a couple of rough rides. Um, I thought I was going to crash more than once, but somehow managed not to. <laughs> so anyway, another fun day. We all survived. Well, I might not be the most handsome or prettiest thing on the planet, but those flowers behind me sure are. Boy, aren't they beautiful. Boy, we've just had a heck of a day today. We went a little over 160 miles, and uh, we're pretty tuckered out. And we ended up at the Wheels Through Time Museum. Uh, what a wonderful museum. If you have never gone there and you like motorcycles, that needs to be on your bucket list. Well, we're kind of reviewing our plans uh, concerning the Trans-America Trail. There's some sections here in North Carolina they advise not to take uh, big adventure bikes down, and Roy and I have a couple of bigger ones, and we're weighted down. So we're a little concerned that uh, maybe that's a little bit above our technical skill. So I'm going to take a look at the map, and we may uh, skip a section. There's an 18-mile Jeep trail. And I think that's part of the section that they're talking about. And it's one way, so it's once you get in there, it's uh, do or die. So I'm thinking we might uh, reevaluate that and skip over that section. But today was a great day, a lot of video uh, involved uh, to present to you. So I hope you like this video. If you did, please give it the big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, take care.